Hey everyone, welcome to the coast. A question that I get asked a lot is, hey, what's the perfect home defense gun? What's the best gun that I can use to defend my family when something goes bump in the night? Well, if I had the answer to that, you guys would probably already know it. Uh, truth is, there's really no such thing. It's a lot like the perfect carry gun. There's no such thing. The perfect home defense gun, it doesn't exist. So the perfect home defense gun would be the gun that you use to help defend your family, to help defend your home. So where better to talk about defending your home than in my own home? The best home defense gun is going to be the gun that is best suited for your environment, the layout of your home, and the proficiency of the person who will be operating it. Your home defense gun has to be something that not only you, but others in your family can be able to operate if, God forbid, you get taken out or injured uh, when an intruder comes into your home. And husbands, if you don't teach your wife about guns or defending herself because you think that she can't do it herself, you're underestimating her. Teach your family about gun safety. Teach them how to handle these firearms. Teach them how to clean them how to load ammunition into them because one day you might not be there to protect them. And they could have to fend off an intruder without you. So teach them, share your knowledge with them, show them how to defend themselves. All right, before we get started in talking about these guns, let me just say, as someone who grew up in a very bad neighborhood and had people break into my house and walk around while I'm sleeping as a young child. Uh, I have experience with intruders in my home. All right, so here I have three different firearms. You may use a variation of one of the three, but if you don't know how to use one of them, then you might want to consider taking a course to learn how to use them. And by use them, I mean clear malfunction, load ammunition, chamber around, pull the trigger, and effectively hit your target, then you might want to choose a different tool for self-defense. So that brings me to my number one point, and that is training. If you're going to use one of these guns in self-defense to defend your family, to defend your home, you need to be proficient with that gun, so you need to train with that gun. And while some of you might ask, well, what's training? Well, training is putting ammunition into the gun, pointing it down range, and pulling the trigger. That's training. All right, so first off, let me just say that I hope that your home never gets invaded. Even if you're not there, I hope that it never happens to you. But if it does, chances are that it's going to be at night, it's going to be multiple people, and they're going to probably be armed with the intent to do you some kind of harm, especially if you get in their way. Let's check out number three. So the pro to a 12 gauge shotgun is that it does have quite a bit of knockdown power. It has decent capacity, the ability to store extra ammo with side saddles, and the ability to shoot a variety of different shells. So what will you choose? Will you choose slugs? buckshot, birdshot, all of that's going to depend on the environment and the layout of your home. I personally would never choose a slug for fear of over penetration and I would also never choose birdshot for under penetration. Also, if you're shooting in your home, uh, chances are that it's going to be a small grouping anyway because of the distance that you'll be shooting from. So a con for me for this gun is that like most shotguns, it's pretty long and it's pretty heavy. So if I'm in close quarters and I have this gun out, uh, somebody could easily grab the front of this gun and direct it away and control it or even possibly take it from me because of the size and the weight. And then there are other people that will make the argument that the sound of a shotgun racking is enough to make an intruder flee. So if you're the type of person that is willing to gamble the lives and safety of your family on the sound of a scary sound making an intruder flee, then you might as well stop the video right here. Alright, so now for my number two choice. 
My number two choice is the AR pistol. I chose the AR pistol because of its capacity and its power. This AR pistol has a seven and a half inch barrel which makes it super easy to maneuver even in a tight hallway. You want to keep the overall length of the barrel short. I wouldn't go any longer than 11 inches. This AR is very light even with a full magazine. Uh, it's still a very light maneuverable gun. A pro to an AR platform is that it's very easy to attach accessories such as a red dot or even a flashlight. Another pro for the AR is the 223 cartridge or 556 is that it's a very fast moving projectile but once it hits its intended target it's going to tumble and create more surface area and slow the bullet down and potentially penetrate less. The pro for the AR-15 is magazine capacity. Uh, standard AR mags are 30 rounds but you can get 42 round magazines as well. And then you can even get drum mags that hold up to 100 rounds. I know you're saying that shooting guns in my house is going to be really loud. I'm not going to be able to hear after that first shot. Well that's why I keep a set of an electronic ear pro next to my bed. And not only does this do great for muffling the sound of a gunshot, but it also lets you pick up on other sounds that you might not normally hear because of the microphones that are inside these headphones. Alright, so my number one pick, you probably already guessed it, is the pistol. The pistol is my number one choice, mostly because of its versatility. So here I have a Glock 19 with a Streamlight TLR1. Do I think that you need a weapon light? Well, yes and no. A potential con to having a light on your gun is giving your intruder essentially a target to shoot at. And then a pro to having a light mounted on your pistol is obviously being able to see your target. Another pro to a pistol is that if you have your concealed carry, you can use your carry gun as your home defense gun and hopefully you've trained with it and you become familiar and proficient with it. Another pro is that it can be used one-handed and if you need to block your children from running off or fend off an attacker, it can be used one-handed. It can be shot from close retention here while you're trying to fend off uh, an intruder. It can be easily wielded by uh, anyone of any gender or young children. Another pro for uh, at least a Glock 19 is the ammo capacity. You've got a 15 mag round magazine plus one in the chamber, you have 16 rounds, as opposed to something like a 1911 that only gives you eight plus one. And I know a lot of guys out there will say, well, all I need is one shot from a 45 to take somebody out. And that might be true. Does that mean that that intruder is going to stay stagnant? He's not going to be moving? that your adrenaline's not going to be pumping and you're not going to have that tunnel vision and you're, and you're not going to lose your fine motor skills, uh, I highly doubt it. Then you have the guys that say, well I shoot a 45 because they don't make a 46. Like just a glancing blow from a 45 is going to take somebody down. Well I'm sorry but I have news for you, it's not going to. I would take shot placement and capacity over power any day of the week. So that's why I personally choose the 9mm. And if you disagree with me, then you can just let me know down in the comments. Glock 19, 15 plus 1 capacity, but add a stick mag, and you've got essentially the same capacity as an AR-15. Plus, loading a magazine into a semi-automatic pistol is always going to be much easier and more effective than loading shells into a shotgun or even potentially loading a magazine into an AR-15. If you're going to be shooting a pistol indoors, I do recommend that you get some kind of self-defense round, such as these critical defense hollow points to help prevent against over-penetration. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for me. I hope that this video was informational. I hope you learned something from it that you can use something in this video to help defend your family, help defend your home. Uh, so a, a few closing thoughts, train, know the layout of your home, teach your family how to shoot and defend themselves, buy the correct gear, and did I mention train? Thank you so much for watching, we love you guys, you know the drill, stay humble, stay free, stay safe, we'll see you next time.
Passion, 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 passion,